Hi, on behalf of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar State Institute of Medical Sciences, welcome you all on this session of BCBR, that is Data Management. Uh, I am Dr. Manisha Sharma, Professor and Head Department of Anatomy at Ames Mohali. So today we are going to discuss about how to manage data. Now, what are the various uh, steps which we should take into consideration while managing the data? Are number one, we should be properly defining the variables. Uh, then we should create a study database after uh, designing the data collection tools properly, and then we should create a data dictionary. Uh, while entering the data, we should took, take into consideration all the errors which we are going to correct during the data entry. So data entry will be acting as a uh, check for correcting the errors. Then after the cre uh, creation of all the data set, we can uh, further categorize it into different data sets which are necessary for analysis. And the last but not the least is we should take into consideration for backing up our data and also archiving the data set which is not currently to be used. So the main key elements of data management include what is the basic data structure, data entry, individual and aggregated databases, mother and daughter databases. So uh, first of all is the basic data structure. Those who are new to research, they should know what a data represents and how it is organized in an Excel sheet. Let's see if we have an Excel sheet, we have the columns. These are the columns and rows. In each column, the data is representing one variable and each row represents all the values of variables belonging to a particular individual who can be identified by a unique identity. So whenever we are entering data, we should try to create a unique identifier for an individual who is participating in the research so that uh, we can share the data with others and there is uh, no need of uh, sharing the identity of a particular individual. So creating a unique identifier will help us to share the uh, data all over the world even. So when we have uh, created a unique identity, it should be uh, maintained by a computerized index. And also we should make sure that it is uh, passing all the quality insurance procedures. So as uh, there is no duplication in the generation of identifiers, which can cause confusion later. Like we can use some codes, uh, especially uh, as seen in this figure. Uh, these are the various codes or identifiers uh, known as global unique identifiers being uh, created by software. Certain institutes like NIH, when they go for research protocols all over the world, they need to generate identities for the individuals participating in the research uh, so that uh, they, their data, which is uh, widespread and being collected from different sources all over the world, can be easily shared with the researchers. And each set of digits, like here we can see, this is a set of digits or uh, some alphabets also that is uh, maybe indicating a specific uh, area of information pertaining to that particular individual. Uh, like they share a consent addendum uh, to the study participants which, uh, which is filled by them and they give some basic information regarding their identity and depending upon this information unique identifier is generated. Another uh, sequence which can be adopted for creating unique identifier may be uh, in the form of a set of seven digits in one in which first and second digit may be indicative of a particular village, third and fourth digit indicating uh, the number of the street and fifth digit the house number and sixth and seventh digit uh, may be displaying some information uh, related to that person particularly. So this is how we can generate the unique identifier. So then uh, we should also mention some specifications regarding the vari variables before entering them into the database. Uh, 
uh, we should know whether the variable is an integer and we should uh, specify how many number of digits are to be entered in that particular variable and if it is a numeric the number of decimals to which we should enter it that should also be specified before entering the data so that any mistake which is there can be rectified immediately afterwards if the uh, if the variable is alphanumeric then we should specify the length and we should convert all the letters to the capitals and if dates are to be mentioned as a variable then we should uh, mention them in a particular format like if it is month date and year or date month and year so particularly we should concentrate on all these things they should be specified before we start entering the data uh, we can also name the variables uh, but certain guidelines which we should keep in mind while naming them is uh, they should be clear and understandable whatever names we are given giving and there should be no space given in the name of the variable even if it is clubbed by using two words together and uh, it should be consistently used everywhere and uh, we should try to give names on our own so that there is no duplication in the names of the variables if we leave the uh, variables to be named uh, by a software sometimes there can be some duplicates in the names of variables which should be avoided a uh, data collection instrument we should design in such a way that when we are going to enter the data it should be helpful to categorize the data into different categories just at the look of the data collection instruments so that we can first enter all the data related to the identity of a particular uh, participant then the demographic features should also uh, be there separately in in, a, in the form of a continuity or a series of questions indicating the demographic information of the participant then next can be the health problem or whatever uh, outcome we are dealing with and various exposures or variables also including some other factors which can act as variables so that should be uh, designed the data collection instrument should be designed in a way so that it is easy to enter the uh, data while entering the data in database and also simultaneously we should uh, uh, form the questionnaire in such a manner that uh, if the question is having yes or no answer it is already given the number represented as 1 and 0 so that when we are entering the data we can use it directly as 1 and 0 for yes and no we need not uh, code it again while entering the data so when we are entering the data we should use this opportunity as a, a way to check if the data is complete if there are any problems with the data like there are errors or there are some unwanted observations there are some uh, outliers or there is some missing values so all these things should be taken into consideration while entering the data and we can mention or write some comments regarding any queries about the data and uh, immediately inform the data collectors regarding the problems and seek clarification from them uh, so this is how we can uh, check the data entry and complete our data and uh, when we have entered the data from a particular performer it should be marked as completed so that we need not enter it again and after we have entered the data we can validate it by various means we can give some uh, numerical coding also to some answers and uh, uh, we can also use some uh, numbers to depict the missing values like we can use 9 99 or 999 as a symbol for missing values but we should take into consideration that wherever uh, there are some matching elements like that there we should uh, try to avoid the similar missing values like if we are entering 99 in a column depicting age that can be confused with actual values we, sh we should take into consideration such things and if we are suppose we are giving a number 1 uh, to walking and number 2 to cycling we cannot club these as 1 and 2 if the person is involved both in walking and cycling because that will create problem while analyzing the results so we should avoid them uh, we can also use 
some other uh, uh, numbers like 1 and 0 for gradients like yes or no and for present and absent or we can even use 1 and 2 also now uh, for entering the data we can uh, check what specifications we have given uh, before entering the data like uh, uh, we can uh, specify how much maximum value or minimum value can be entered in a particular column uh, similarly what set of values uh, can be there which can be accepted while entering the data in the excel sheet then we can also plan for skip patterns like if a particular question is answered as yes or no then uh, there may be some questions following that particular question uh, which are to be answered only if the answer is yes so if the answer is no then we can use the skip pattern we can all avoid those uh, questions which are coming in future uh, related to that question then we can go for automatic coding of uh, certain uh, uh, answers Uh, we should uh, be able to copy the data from the preceding records by linking the lists together and uh, we should uh, manage what is to be calculated later on automatically like if we are uh, adding the data of height and weight we should uh, initially only uh, manage it in the way that it uh, automatically calculates the body mass index once we have entered the height and weight then after entry we should also be able to document the data what are the uh, what is the data structure what is the name of the participant what how many are the number of records uh, what are the various uh, variables how we have named them what value we have given to each answer what is the coding used when is the data created and how it is modified then uh, what are the media of uh, storage of this data what is the location the backup and any other information related to the data Uh, must be documented once we have entered the data so that it is easy to recover it later so after entering the data we can uh, construct a data dictionary also known as variable catalog or repositories sometimes so what is a data dictionary data dictionary is basically uh, what as whatever has been stored in the data uh, tables or databases Uh, their detail or the information related to all those tables is stored in the data dictionary so immediately after having a look at the data dictionary we can understand what is there in the respective tables so basically the data dictionary contains information about the database it can have questionnaire item uh, the variable name type of the variable whether it is integer or numeric or alpha numeric etc Uh, what are the formats and values given to various variables and what are the various logical checks all this information when stored in the data dictionary uh, will help the other researcher with whom the data can be shared to understand what lies in the databases or the tables given in the databases and also if we want to visit uh, the database again after a long period if we have the data dictionary we can understand it easily like here we can see this is an example of data dictionary generated by the uh, by a soft software like this is the data we have employee id in the first column in the second column is the name of the uh, participant in the last then there is a last name then there are some values related to that person in the form of some variable uh, maybe in the form of a number of a vehicle or whatever it is then uh, all this data is being represented in this data dictionary or metadata in the form of uh, this information like it is this first column is indicating all the information about the uh, first column first column is indicating employee id here you can see this is the employee id and what is the data type it is an integer okay so and uh, description it is the primary key of a table so likewise we can uh, go through and see what this means uh, what this column means second is as if the second column is indicating first name of the individual so from immediately from the data dictionary we can understand what all these these uh, variables mean 
Now coming on to the individual and aggregated databases, when we uh, form a database individually, like each record is an observation, then if we aggregate them, that those observations will be coming in the form of counts. So aggregated databases usually come in the form of counts. And if we aggregate the databases and there is a lot of data which is repeated, we need to normalize that database. So basically normalizing the database means we want to minimize the data redundancy. If there is some information uh, that will be only coming once. And this allows further uh, changes if required easily. So we need not uh, go for entering the data again and again, which is having the same value. We can see how the normalizing of database has helped in creating uh, the tables uh, easily. Like here in the, this example, we can see this is the information related to employees of a particular uh, organization. Here employee ID is there, then the name is there. Uh, manager ID under which the employee is working is also given here and fourth uh, column is indicating the sector ID. So we have created a separate table indicating all the uh, sectors and uh, another table for managers. So if any change occurs in the sector or manager, we need to change only this table. This will keep on increasing like that only. We will not have to change the main table of the data. So this is how uh, some sub tables have been created which can be easily changed and it is uh, done in a very simple way. Then coming on to mother and da daughter databases, uh, like we can have databases at various levels. The uh, levels can be like village level database, then household database, individual and illness episode database. And we can uh, generate various databases and we can link them together so that if we want to uh, club them, we can. Okay. And uh, uh, with the help of identifiers, if we have given some typical identifiers to each databases, we can club them and use them effectively. Like if we have a university, we uh, and it has various subparts in the form of different colleges. And colleges also further have different uh, uh, sections and departments. Further, uh, there are categorizations like a telecom uh, section is uh, independently there. Uh, analysis and design is there. Databases are there. We can add uh, the sub level data here and we can uh, link these data together. So whenever we want to link them and see the overall data, we can easily uh, get it by linking the lists together. So this is how we can use the uh, data at different levels. Now coming on to the uh, last but not the least important point regarding the data management is having a data backup and data archiving process in uh, place while entering the data. So when we are working on the data, particularly you know, on the current and active data, uh, we should keep in mind that we always have to have a backup of the data. In case there is a, a hardware failure or recent data corruption is there or any uh, problem with the current working data, uh, we, we should have a copy of that data so, so that our work should not suffer. And archiving is slightly different from the backup. In archiving, we store the currently non-active data into long-term storage system. So uh, basically see here, this is the primary data. We are copying it and maintaining a backup. But if the data is not uh, being used currently, we can archive them. And after archiving at a later date, if we need them, we can uh, retrieve the data from there. So basically archiving is meant for space management and for long-term retention. And we can store a huge amount of data uh, over many years in the form of data archives. So to sum up at the end, we should see that if we are coding the database, we should use the numerical uh, coding. If we are entering the data, quality assurance procedures should be adopted. Uh, we can store the information at the level where it is needed and we can uh, merge or relate the files 
by linking them together as and when required so that we can uh, avoid the data redundancy and uh, keep uh, the storage capacity to the minimum and uh, uh, very important we should always have a backup of our data which is currently being used that's all thank you so much